I'm going to be talking to Mark Fitzgerald, who's the CEO of Ever Technologies, about his company's uh, expansion into the U.S. data center market, which is very hot these days. So welcome to the interview, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's very good to be back again. I appreciate it. Well, look, uh, we hear nothing but these days about how AI is exploding in the United States. Their, uh, their uh, grid can't keep up. I mean, we see some of the regional tr uh, uh, transmission organizations saying, look, we can't take any more. We're just, uh, we're at capacity now. Mm -hmm. But your technology, your uh, advanced geothermal technology seems absolutely perfect and suited for a data center. Yeah, I, I love the way you characterize that, Mark. And we would agree 100% that the uh, the ever the ever geothermal system, the closed loop system that we have developed and have proven uh, at Garrett's Reed in Germany, is a is a fantastic solution for some of the challenges that exist not only in the United States but around the world as it relates to this big advancement in artificial intelligence and and uh, the advancement in machine learning and computing around the world. And that that's really for two reasons that that I say that the Everloop technology is is applicable. The first, the power required to drive data centers and to to you know to create uh, the growth in that industry is material. And most of the grids either are not made to handle it or the generation of power cannot support that. An Everloop system is a natural partner with the development by anybody of a data center because we can develop that uh, unique and dedicated power uh, generation and power supply component to the data center. So when you say that, I, I mean, I imagine that, uh, you know, the one of these big hyperscalers, yeah. uh, you know, that are making these giant data centers and they literally could put an, an Ever uh, Loop right next to the data center. No need to go yeah. to the grid. You've got it right, you've got a direct connection into your into your data center. Is that how it would work? That's exactly the way we think about it. And so there is a direct connection from our geothermal system into the data center. An ever loop, a closed loop system is reliable, it's stable. Um, and I think one of the things that, two of the things, excuse me, that sometimes go unstated as we talk about this, one is, exactly as you've you've highlighted, Markham, there is not a draw on the existing grid. So existing power that flows either to residential or industrial users is not interrupted or arguably does not increase in cost because of, of demand off that system. And the second is that the lights could go out everywhere and every loop system will continue to operate. And we do not require any power input uh, to for the closed loop system to work. Uh, we can typically start the system without power input. And we think that's one of the, the significant advantages that uh, exists for the hyperscalers or, or, or other users is um, we can pro provide that power reliably in an uninterruptible basis, uh, even when uh, other systems go down. Yeah, that's, now have you had any conversations with data center companies in the United States? We, we talk to everybody, I'll be honest, uh, Markham. You know, the, 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 the next step for, for Ever is now that we've proven in Germany that the system works. So, you know, one of the, the most exciting things for me over the last month has, has been to watch the commissioning of that system uh, and the ability to generate power, the ability to draw heat uh, in the way that we had, had engineered and designed is the commercialization of that and where do we go now to take the next steps to ensure that the Everloop systems become sort of just part of the fabric of energy supply around the globe. And so um, we're looking at regions where um, there's a strong support for geothermal development. We're looking at regions where there's strong expected uh, requirement on power demand or heat demand, district heating, especially in the, U uh, excuse me, in Europe. And we're looking at areas that believe in the environmental and uh, sustainability components of, of this. And so we're in the early stages. We're able to talk to people now that, that the system's been proven and uh, we'll move as quickly as we can, for sure. Now, I have to ask, given that you're a Canadian company, have you been talking to uh, you know, companies about Canadian data center projects and other projects uh, you know, that maybe aren't related to data centers? 
Yeah, we think there's there's two opportunities, Mark, I mean, in Canada. And one is um, in Alberta, for example, which is where we are, there's been significant conversation and discussions about um, the creation of a data center industry in northern Alberta. Um, and for us, that, that's, again, a natural opportunity to partner. There are some of the challenges that exist across Canada are uh, power costs are relatively low. Um, you know, heat costs are relatively low compared to other regions of the world. And so the margin, um, you know, it can come under a little bit of pressure. But when we think about data center development and the opportunity for, for um, dedicated power generation for that data center, uh, ever is a natural partner. The second is the Arctic. Um, you know, I, I continue to believe and we continue to believe that as Canada thinks about sovereignty in the Arctic, uh, the development of defense systems in the Arctic, um, it's, a, again, a natural opportunity as those developments occur, rather than building out significant grid systems uh, or significant developments on coal, natural gas, or otherwise, uh, the Evergrid technology is, is there and able to be developed quite rapidly. And so those would be the two focuses for us in Canada. Now, I have to ask, have you had any conversations with uh, oil sands companies, because oil sands companies require lots of electricity and mm -hmm. they require lots of heat, uh, in, especially on the SAG-D side, but also on the mining side. And it just seems like if there's going to be any electrification of oil sands operations, that rather than building out big infrastructure and arguably even building out carbon mm -hmm. capture and storage, you could electrify things with the, your uh, with your geothermal system. Yeah, I you know, I think... Markham, I, I, I would hesitate to, to declare everybody we've talked to. I, you know, I, I would, I would uh, probably get in trouble if I did. But I, I think your understanding of the type of market that we would look at for our geothermal system is, is spot on. There are certainly areas that we don't think we can compete. Um, but there's multiple areas where we believe we can compete very, very effectively. And they center on exactly as you talked about, areas that that want to reduce emissions, create stable power, um, have uh, long-term requirements for that power, and perhaps are challenged by uh, the ability to draw off existing grids or existing um, uh, power supplies. And so to your point, data center development, um, big oil sands development, uh, development in the Arctic supporting Canadian sovereignty, any of those are, are natural opportunities for ever to partner. Mark, fascinating technology. We want to keep up with this story. I'll be talking to you in the future, I Please. guarantee you. It's very exciting. Uh, Merry Christmas and all the best to ever in 2026. Thank you so much. And again, thanks for the opportunity. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of your listeners and very much look forward to continuing the story in 2026.